welcome to Sports Talk with Kifu, and I'm your host, Kifu and Jabulu Matlao. Let's go. Week in roundup. Like, this weekend roundup is not going to be long at all. No. I'm not going to do my regular weekend roundups. I'm going to do like a short one. I'm just tweaking it a bit, right? So, I'm going to grade every single top 16 week. Week roundup it's supposed to be a weekend roundup, but play during the week. You guys get it, but but yeah, let's go. Oof, Man United. I give them an A minus. I get it. They were nine no, not even an A minus man. I just give them like a B plus. They just did what they had to do, especially after 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 getting a red card. It's Man United. It has to beat Southampton. Like Southampton is shouldn't even ever. Okay, I get it. It's, you're not granted that you're always going to be at the top. But Man United and Southampton, different levels. So Man United did what Man United had to do. Manchester City versus Burnley. And going back to this, let me not even go to that city. Uh, let me carry on with this Manchester Uh this Manchester squad did what they were supposed to do. They were good, but they weren't excellent. They were, okay, they, you don't beat teams that I know by not being excellent, but they did what they had to do. If you're a Manchester United fan, don't get too gassed. I get it. Daniel James scored. Dead baller. R.I.P. Man, that man's dead baller. Hope you get out of my club. But anyway, let me carry on. I don't know how he survives, man. I, I don't even know how Daniel James survives. I don't know how he keeps on getting into the squad. Oli loves this dead ball. In Gom. In, in my country, you call him in Gom because, yeah, dead ball. Gom. And then, um, let's move on. City versus Burnley. City, I give them a B. I give them a B plus, man. Give them a B plus. Same grade as Man United. They did what they had to do. Were they great? No. But they did what they had to do. City have to be burned. They just did what they had to do. Sometimes that's all you have to do. City don't play the most amazing football that I've ever seen. But they get the job done. They do. Pep has his boys drilled to a certain... Uh, to a certain shape and form. And they just... Burnley. I mean, the first goal, Nick Pope. Well, he was responsible for that. But let me let me not even go further, man. Nick Pope was. Yeah, Nick Pope just did what Nick Pope. But he was the one that put them on the back foot, and Burnley were trying. To, we're gonna defend a lot of the game. So, and even the balls that they were playing didn't even make sense. The only way that you're going to get through to the city defense is actually by playing diminutive players and running in behind because Stones and Diaz aren't really the quickest. So I get it. I don't know why teams always try to put balls in behind where you can put balls in behind or to the side and making your players run onto them. That you can do. And with the ball in behind over the top, Edison, because he doesn't sit really deep you can get to them but city let me get to city they did what they had to do sterling got his goal goal but yeah we know man sterling sterling sucks when he's in front of goal one-on-one but yeah you didn't hear that for me because everyone's known that for a while moving on liverpool well liverpool lost one nil to right well, that Liverpool team doesn't look like it's going to win any. They just didn't seem like they were going to win. Like, have you seen a team that all they did was... Usually, they, they Liverpool are playing like Chelsea. Bumper side to side. That's all they're doing. Like, the ball just moves from side to side to side to side. And you feel like nothing is going to happen. Well, that's because nothing is going to happen. Like, nothing is going to happen. Because they do so many things. Like, all they do, 
the ball is moving slowly from one one side to the other side. The only reason why I even watch it is because Liverpool is Liverpool and yeah, so that's the only reason why I watched it. But otherwise, it wasn't a great game. And oh man, what do I give Liverpool? Yeah, an F because they don't look like scoring. And yeah, Liverpool is just supposed to beat a team like Brighton. So anyway, man, that would didn't come on. So I was sad, but at least they got in a few. At least they 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 have two wins in a row, in a row. No, they got a good result. They've got two good results in a row. So Brighton are on their way up. Yeah, it's two wins in a row against Tottenham and against Liverpool. So they moving on up. I'm moving on up. <laughs> yeah. And then now we're going on. Okay. Next up, Arsenal. <laughs> And man, Arsenal, man, Arsenal are just a terrible, man, they were, them playing against Wolves, they weren't atrocious or anything, Arsenal dominated the first, four, first 40 minutes, they could have scored like two or three times, they should have scored two or three times, but they didn't, so, what do you do, so what happens this season when you don't go two or three goals up? Well, more than likely, the other team gets momentum and they score. Well, that's what happened. And David Luiz, just don't touch him at all. He's threw on the box and you just made a stupid mistake. Don't touch him at all. He touches him and gets a red card. Wasn't supposed to be a red card. But by that letter of the law, the red card. So he, he got a red card off. That changed the complexion of the game. Then from there they were just chasing it, and then Jean Montinho scores a wonder goal. And then they were just yeah. From that on, from there on, it was they were trying to come back into the game. It was like what ten versus eleven. And then the keeper has a tough moment where he hand he punches the ball outside, and then that's how they lost. Man, it's nine versus eleven. All oh, wolves just kept on doing. He just poked the ball around. So I give Arsenal an A minor. Not even why did I even say A no F F So that's what I give Arsenal. And then lastly and fin final my final top two top six teams. My final two top six teams. Okay. Got it right there. Uh have Chelsea and Tottenham. Chelsea fans were really excited to have this dot. <laughs> yeah. They have Louis Van Gaal coaching them, right? They are happy with hiring Louis Van Gaal. Literally, all Chelsea do is just pass the ball side to side. Like, it's very boring. They play more of a boring brand of football than Tottenham does. Like, you can keep the ball. What are you doing with it? Like, that's boring, man. And Tottenham, I get it. They defend most of the time, but... It's just boring. Without that dire mistake, Chelsea weren't going to score because they hardly created any... They hardly created anything at all, man. Not even chances, not even half. They hardly created a lot of half chances, man. They created a few. But Spurs also created a, a few half chances and one clear-cut opportunity where the dude had to score. So when people are saying, oh, and the balance of play... Chelsea deserve to win. I want balance of play. Keeping the ball. Yeah, man. Chelsea deserve to win. But besides that, man, what, what did they do? Just keeping the ball and passing it side to side. What did they do? People are just giving plaudits to this Tuchel Don for just doing nothing. I mean, Rudiger, dead ball alert. Yeah. Go on, man. That's basically just what he is, man. I don't know how that dude gets into the team. And I don't know how Mourinho didn't put pressure on Jorginho because what? Dead baller alert. Man, that man is a dead baller. Go on. Jorginho is a dead baller. Let's be frank. Let's be honest with ourselves. He just doesn't cut it. Because if you literally just put a person next to 
Jorginho or put your player on Jorginho. It's been proven. He can't play through that. Then you get to Nick Bowles and then you start attacks further ahead by putting pressure on Jorginho. It's not rocket science. It's been proven before that it works. Jorginho all of a sudden just didn't become a good footballer all of a sudden. It's like John Stones all of a sudden people say, oh, John Stones is a great defender. No, he's not. Put pressure on him and he'll return. He'll revert back to normal settings. But we're talking about Chelsea. Okay, Verna, Verna is Verna. He sucks. And then, yeah, man. And then you get Mourinho. Well, oh, Man, I've been waiting to speak about Mourinho for a while, man. Where are all these Manchester United fans that were saying, Oh, oh no, we miss Mourinho, we miss Mourinho, Paul. If you guys missed that, <laughs> all these love, United, hate, Glazer fans. Oh man, we are currently on loan at Spurs. Where are y'all now? Where are y'all now? Where are y'all now? Y'all, y'all. Y'all still don't think Mourinho is finished. Oh, we fired Mourinho too soon. Oh, bro, we fired him when we were supposed. We fired. We even fired him later than what we are supposed to fire him. That man is finished. He is no longer like. Nah, Mourinho should just go into international coaching. He's done, man. He is done. He does not want to adapt to the times. What kept Sir Alex in his job for such a long time is he was willing to adapt. This dude, like, if you're an attacking coach, you really don't, like, your adaptation is really not that much. But if you're a defensive coach like Mourinho, you adapting to an attacking style is really going to be hard. So his pragmatism is the death of him. Because all he did was literally just put six people at the back. Then Dyer, Dyer made two mistakes. I don't even know why Mourinho trusts Dyer at all. Because he first makes a mistake where he goes too close to Tommy and then surprise, surprise, there's a space open. Basically what David Luiz did the, like a day or two before. And you do it again. And you saw how that ended. Well, didn't end like that because yeah, Chelsea suck. But <laughs> it almost it, if it was a better team, they would have scored. And then he, that penalty. What are you doing? Because Alderweireld is just close by. No need for you to do that. To, to keep on playing the ball while you're on the ground. Because you're going to foul someone. He foul someone. And Mourinho. Mourinho is a... Man, R.I.P. to Mourinho, man. R.I.P. to him, man. And R.I.P. to his career. To his club coaching career at a top team. And it's done. No other top team is going to be willing to take him. Might go to mid table and bottom and you know uh your lower clubs but yeah man that man has been done just before he left united that's when he was done i don't know why tottenham took him in but yeah he's done without kane and i've always said this without kane and son if one goes down he was gonna struggle and surprise surprise i'm being proven right because he was reliant on two players like, no, he didn't put players in to, let's say, get them used to the system and how to play and get them acclimatized. So, yeah. R.I.P. Jose, man. R.I.P. Jose Ball. Well, it's been dead for a long time. Yeah, it's been dead. All these people are saying, oh, we miss Mourinho. Bro, I don't miss Mourinho Ball at all. If you miss this type of football, Small club mentality. Big clubs don't do what Jose is doing. They attack from the front. Fossil football is what Jose is playing. Clear and simple. He he shouldn't even be allowed to coach a big team in this time and day. But anyway, I love it, man. Spurs have just as good... Like, they have a good squad. They could be challenging for top four. But... Because they have a crappy manager, their chances seem to be going down. And thank you for watching another part of weekly weekend roundup with your boy. Thank you.